everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is Bailey and currently it is 6 50 in the morning because today's video I am doing an OFA health testing vlog for you guys so my Bernie's Mountain Dog Miss Mercedes will be going through the OFA testing and today she is doing her hip and elbow x-rays so I thought I would take you guys along I know not a lot of people talk about it or vlog about it and you know I had questions when I first heard about it and I did get a lot of questions on my Instagram which I will dive into later in this vlog but yeah I wanted to take you guys along so if you like this video make sure to give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button down below so you can join our pause of purpose fam but yeah like I said it is 6 50 in the morning and I already got ready Mercedes she is over in her crate right now because she cannot to eat she had to stop eating at 10 p.m. last night and I have if you're new another dog his name is Moose and so he is eating right now it's their normal eating time so she's in her crate so she won't sneak any kibble we're leaving in about 20 minutes to take Mercedes to her appointment and it is a drop-off appointment so I won't be able to film like the actual x-ray process I did ask if I could be there but they treat it like a procedure because she is being sedated which I will talk about later um, but yeah that's how they treat it so it's done in the back and I am not able to be there but I still wanted to vlog this for you guys to see what the process is like and answer questions that you guys have so I will catch up with you guys in a little bit when Mercedes and I are leaving or at the vet we made it here to the vet are you excited Mercedes are you nervous hmm. maybe a little bit both yeah we made it here to the vet they open in like four more minutes so we're just gonna sit here for a couple more minutes but oh, oh. sorry that she's breathing so hard but i just want to say all i bring to the vet or all that i'm bringing today is just her slip lead and her collar just in case they need it i don't think they would but i was thinking like oh i should bring treats but you can't eat and poor girl she's starving not really but she loves her food so yeah so poor poor Mercedes but yeah we're here and I will try and get a couple clips inside on my phone big old burner huh that tongue yeah anyways we're here at the vet and I will bring in my phone and try to get a couple clips I just finished dropping off Mercedes and we did wait in the waiting room for quite a while. It was almost 30 minutes just for a tech to come and take her back. But she was anxious. I'm not going to lie. You're probably telling the clips, but she was just anxious. So I know she's going to be fine, but I just don't <laughs> like to see her like that. So yeah, I did get a couple clips, but not a lot. So now I just wait until they call me to tell me that she's ready. I am going to work for a couple hours, so I'll pick her up this afternoon but yeah I'm just waiting on their call so I thought I would go ahead and answer y'all's questions about OFA like anything about OFA and if you are not following us on Instagram you should that's where I mainly post my question boxes so if you want to be included in my next Q&A for whatever topic then you should follow us at the pause of purpose on Instagram all right so I'm gonna start off with a basic question I think this is a perfect question to start off with and that is what is OFA so OFA stands for orthopedic foundation of animals or for animals I forget which one but basically they're an organization that test for genetic diseases in dogs and also cats I believe you can OFA test them so you can test hips elbows heart and eyes and they're an organization you send like for Mercedes she's getting hips and elbows today so once they do the x-rays they will send them off to the OFA organization they score them by professionals obviously and then send the scores back and then it kind of tells you the development of their hip joints 
will they have hip dysplasia or do they have like really good structure so that is OFA and then they also ask why is it important so it just depends to some people it's not important you don't need to test for it and for others I think it is very important so it's kind of what do you want to do with your dog or I guess cat um, so it might be important if you are interested in the AKC and you want to do a confirmation and you just want a well structured dog you would want to if you're looking for a puppy if you're looking for a dog ask for OFA scores from the parents I think also if you are breeding then it is also important <laughs> to do OFA testing and this is just as a preventative measure to show that I mean there's only so much that as a breeder you can do to prevent health diseases and whatnot in your litters so genetic testing and then OFA testing is the other and that is actually my plan with Mercedes so she has been genetically health tested through Embark and it came back a hundred percent like fine for all the diseases or genetic diseases that they test for and hers are a hundred percent good and then so this is her second health testing that she'll have to do before I breed her so she will have to pass this one which is kind of nerve-wracking to think about but she's going to do fine but if your dog or cat is just a pet and you don't really care then it might not be important to you my other dog moose that i mentioned earlier if you're new here he is a bernadoodle and i will most likely never ofa test him just because for him it's not necessary i don't plan to breed him he's neutered i can't breed him so i won't ofa test moose that's not important to me but because my goal with Mercedes is to breed her then for my program and for the standards that I want to uphold my program to it is important to do OFA testing the next question is does the dog get put under anesthesia so yes and no there are some vets that require it and some that don't and I think that depends on your dog or just your preference if you want them to go under anesthesia. With Mercedes, I decided to do the anesthesia route just because for the hip and elbow x-rays, they are put in Unco not uncomfortable maybe unnatural is the right word just unnatural positions and they have to be very still so I think Mercedes would just do best if she was put in under anesthesia but my vet if they are past a certain age they require blood work but because she's so young they don't require it and she just got her like yearly vaccination wellness I did a whole vlog on it but she just got a checkup recently and she was 100% healthy so I felt comfortable not doing the pre blood work but if you if that is something that you're nervous about but you think anesthesia is the best route that I at least my vet I would be surprised if other vets aren't like this as well but they do require at a certain age like pre-surgical pre going under anesthesia blood work just to make sure everything is fine but i do know that there are some vets that don't require anesthesia and will do it without you just have to consider your dog but i will say it is harder to find someone who does not do anesthesia where probably your vet your local vets around you probably do require anesthesia so yeah the next question says what is the total cost for the testing so great question so like i said i am only doing hips and joints with mercedes so i am not sure what it would cost for all four like the heart and the eyes as well but just for the hips and the joints because i think that was most important to test first because of Bernie's Mountain Dogs and hip dysplasia problems so total cost for the hips and the joints so they quoted me which you can ask for a quote I would definitely recommend doing that and kind of get quotes from different people so I got a, I was quoted they quoted me they gave me a range of this would be the lowest this would be the highest and I want to say the lowest was either like around seven eight hundred and then the highest was a thousand or eleven hundred dollars so the big difference was the pre-surgical lab work but going under anesthesia the x-rays 
all the fees that are required and then they also added the OFA certification cost which I want to say was 70 or 90 dollars I can't maybe I can like show a screenshot for you guys like I'm perfectly fine sharing that of what I was quoted but I will not be getting the official OFA certification because I am doing preliminary results which I can talk about in a little bit but yeah, anyway, so I think for the hips and joints for Mercedes, it'll be around seven to $800. And because I elected not to do the pre-surgical, pre-under anesthesia lab work because she is young and my vet did not require it because she's healthy and yeah, like she's young and it would literally be a freak accident if something happened then um so yeah that'll be my price but i can tell you guys a total once i pick her up because that's when i pay so i hope that was helpful and if you are interested in ofa again you can call around and ask them to send you quotes which is what i did and then the last question that i'm going to answer says what should you train to make the process go smoothly so this definitely depends if you're doing anesthesia or not if you are not doing anesthesia then i would say definitely practice putting your dog on their back. I know one of the positions I believe for hips is them literally being like spread eagle. So definitely practice that or maybe just like a little bit of pressure like if someone's holding them down just to make sure they are still and that the x-ray is perfectly clear. So maybe practicing like different positions and then I mean other than that like at the vet they do I'm pretty sure all vets do this is kennel your dogs when they are not actively doing something with them or if they're waking up like I'm pretty sure that's where Mercedes is right now just in a kennel waiting to do the testing and then when she comes off anesthesia they'll like monitor her obviously but anyway so if your dog is not comfortable with a crate then I would definitely start practicing that but other than that there's really not much that you need to practice or prepare for as far as preparations I mentioned this earlier but she just had to stop eating at 10 p.m. last night and then she got water this morning and then I took it away so it was like two hours before that I took away her water and yeah I that was pretty much all the preparations that went into it so those are all the questions but I did want to keep talking about whether you need to do all four and why am I doing preliminary preliminary OFA testing and the certification all of that because I think people don't talk about that and it is confusing so I had to look it up and do research so basically you do not have to do all four so if you just want to do hip and joints then you know that's why you have you don't have to do heart and eyes and then to talk about preliminary testing versus official testing so the OFA organization does not give official scoring unless they are at least two years old so Mercedes is a year and like four months so I'm just gonna say a year and a half she is a year and a half years old but you can still test them you just won't get an official score so you won't get a piece of paper that says they got this score whatever you know fair poor excellent whatever you it's not an official piece of paper but you still get the scores so yeah but with the official scoring it is official and you get official like a certification with it and you can link it to their AKC profile and whatever so that's kind of the benefits of that for preliminary I I just want to know like my plans are to breed Mercedes next year like in less than a year kind of next summer is kind of when she should be in heat around that time so I want to know now <laughs> I'll put up a screenshot but the closer they are to two the more likely that the score they get now versus when they're two is very similar I would not OFA test a puppy five six months old I would at least wait until a year because of the chances of that score being similar to when they are two years old is more likely and again I'll 
put up the screenshot if I have not already about that on the OFA website. I will also link it down below. So for example, Mercedes is a year and a half. I'm doing preliminary testing. Say she gets I'm just, say she gets an excellent score, which is like the highest score you can get. The chances are of her also getting that score at two years old is like 97, 98%. So it's like a 2% chance that she'd get an excellent and then maybe a lower score, but she wouldn't fail. You know, like, <laughs> I hope that kind of makes sense, but it's just so very unlikely that she would fail when she gets an excellent at a year and a half old just because of how close she is to that two year mark. I hope I'm making sense with that. Um, but yeah, so the benefits of doing the official scoring is an official certificate. You also can link it to their AKC, have it on their AKC paperwork, which I know is important to some people. The benefits of doing preliminary testing is that you know sooner. So if you're planning to breed like I am Mercedes around two years old, then I will have months to prepare and, you know, match her with someone that fits her genetics and all of that. So for me doing it early, it's also just for preparation purposes and yeah, just future planning because I want to be very purposeful in breeding in, in these puppies. So, but I will say the downside is that if she, say she fails or gets a really low score, then you can retest at two, but you're also paying for the test again. So yeah. So that was kind of in a nutshell, preliminary versus official, the benefits, the disadvantages, you know, whatever. So if you have any questions, please um, comment down below. I'm happy to answer. I will also link the OFA website, like I said. So you can also, you know, go on there if you're curious and just dive deeper into it. But yeah, that's kind of a rambly basics of OFA. So right now, like I mentioned earlier, I am just waiting for them to call me to say that Mercedes is, you know, off anesthesia because they're going to monitor her like for several hours after doing the x-rays just to make sure everything is fine with the anesthesia. And then I will be picking her up around, but sometime between four and five, just depending on when they call me and stuff. So I will talk to you guys then. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So I just wanted to give you a little update on Mercedes. Um, so we did those radiographs. Uh, everything went great. So we sedated her, and then we did those radiographs. And then now uh, she's waking up right now, so she's doing perfect. And then um, as for picking her up today, um, she'll be ready anytime after lunch, like 1, 2 o'clock. Um, you don't have to come at that time, but just sometime. Uh, after lunch, she'll be ready to go, okay? Okay, yeah, that sounds good. I'll probably be there around, like, 4.30 um, after okay, work, yeah, so fine. I'll be there. <laughs> Perfect. All right, sounds good. We'll, we'll, we'll see you then, okay? Okay, thank you so much. Yes, you're welcome. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. She's already done. That was fast. Wow. Well, she did good. I don't know how much you heard, but... She did good and yeah, she's waking up right now and they're gonna monitor her for a couple hours and then I can pick her up after I'm done working. So it is now 4.30 and I am here at the vet to pick up Miss Mercedes. I think the last thing I filmed was them calling me at 10 and I have dropped her off at 8.30 so all of it really took an hour and a half but they did have to keep her because she did go under anesthesia just to monitor her and then they called me, I believe it was around 12 and I said she was fully awake and they were like, oh my gosh, she's so sweet. And I was like, oh, you know, <laughs> she's my sweet girl and that I was nervous that she was a little anxious when she was going back and she's like, oh no, she's happy in the kennels that they have back there and no, she's doing really good. And then they're asking me for her AKC registration numbers and names and I didn't have that so I'll have to send that to them later today. But yeah, I guess if you are doing the OFA and your dog is AKC registered, you need that. So yeah, they're not gonna be able to send off the test until Monday which is fine but yeah I guess you would need that which I did not know so I'll have to get that when I get home but yeah let's go pick up Miss Mercedes. 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 Yeah. 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 Mercedes. Yeah.
Okay. Okay. Well, she did great. Okay. So we dropped a uh, radiograph, and then okay. we'll just one of the doctors will just give you a call okay. and talk to you about those. Okay. Okay. So was she like anxious at all? I know when I dropped off, she was. She so I didn't know how she would act back there. Okay. She's taking a big old nap. She's still okay. might be sleepy. Yeah. Um, maybe because she was sedated, you can give her like half of her normal meal because okay. she can be kind of nauseous. Okay. Um, so just give her half her meal tonight and then tomorrow she'll be pretty sure. Okay. Be and and then like water, like normal is yeah. fine? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. But yeah, she did great. She just she took a big one up. She's really comfy in her kennel. Okay. So. okay. <laughs> All right. Aww. Well, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Then. So I am back home now with Miss Mercedes. She is laying on her cot. She is very tired, which is to be expected, and they warned me of that, so she will probably just be tired for the next day or so. Oh, she's so cute. But anyways, I am very happy with how today went. I love the vet that I am going to, and just you know they updated me <laughs> throughout the day which I was not expecting so that was very nice and just to hear positive things and to say that you know she was fine while she was back there and everything like that so I'm just like very happy about that and yeah we just pray for good results but I thought I would tell you guys like I said the total and kind of how much everything was so yeah let's see how much I spent today so the first thing that is on here is a comprehensive wellness exam, which that is $75 here. So I guess just to look for the doctor to look her over, kind of like your yearly wellness visits for your dogs. That's, I mean, that's what it is. And then for sedation, that was $95. Not as much as I thought it would be. And then antecedent, I'm not exactly sure what that is. But antecedent, that was $38.59. And then for the, for the OSHA compliance fee, diagnostic imaging, I guess some <laughs> x-ray fee, that was $10, okay. And then for the radiograph, three views, that was $340. And then the OFA certification fee was $90, which I didn't think I was getting a certification. <laughs> I'll let you guys know. I did not. Maybe I, I, maybe I get a certification, but it's just not official. I don't know. Or maybe that's just their way of saying that they send the results or... The charge for them like scoring her hip x-rays and joints I'm not sure we will find out <laughs> once I get the results or I might just call and ask about that but anyways the OFA certification fee is $90 and then in total everything was six hundred and forty eight dollars and fifty nine cents which is actually a little bit less than I thought it was I thought it would be around like seven eight hundred dollars and then on the high end they quoted me was 1100 like I mentioned earlier so I mean not bad so from here it's really just a waiting game I do have to email them her AKC information that way they can put all the correct information on the form to send off to OFA and they will be sending it off on Monday today is Friday so and then from there they said it takes about two to three weeks which I was expecting that it would take about that long so I think that is it for this portion of the vlog the next time you will see me we will be getting her results which is like I'm trying not to think about it and just forget about it until they call me that way I'm not like overthinking and like you know what if what if what if so kind of nerve-wracking but I'm not going there and I will see you guys in a couple weeks. So I'm here to share with you guys Miss Mercedes testing results and to wrap up this video I feel like it's long enough already but I received Miss Mercedes scores a lot faster than I thought I would 
the normal wait time is two to three weeks and we received them a week and three days to be exact so very unexpected to receive that email but yeah they did come via email from our vet they sent us the OFA preliminary scoring paper and then we should re be receiving a copy in the mail but I have not received those yet it's been about a month so that probably takes the longest but we did receive a copy via email and in order to pass the OFA testing that we did you needed or we needed at least a fair good or excellent so those are the three passing scores the non-passing ones I think are borderline poor and I think there's one more maybe two more but I Honestly, I'm trying not to look at those. I was trying to focus on a at least a fair, a good, or an excellent. And to share with you guys what Mercedes received. So she received a good, which I am like over the mood about. I am so happy and excited. But yeah, she received a good, which I was praying for at least a fair. But we received a good and yeah, that was just a very happy surprise and I'm just again just so happy and we are officially like one step closer to breeding Miss Mercedes. So Mercedes has completed all of her health testing in order for me to breed her. So the first one I did was the Embark and you can do that like right when they're a puppy. So I did that right when I got her and learned that she was 100% genetically clear and then the last step that I was really waiting on was this OFA preliminary score and then if I didn't receive a good score that I wanted then it may be doing the officials when she turned two. but since she got a good score then I will not be doing the official and I don't know if I mentioned this before I can't remember exactly what all I said in the vlog but I will leave a link below to the scoring and how accurate it is if you do it early versus at two depending on what score they get and how old they are so I will try and leave that link below so you can definitely check it out but yeah since she received a good score then I will not need to retest and do not feel the need to retest her when she's two to make it official I am so happy to be done with the health testing and just to receive great results and to be given the green light to breed Mercedes I do plan to breed her next summer so summer 2024 she should be going into heat around July so that's kind of when I'm planning to breed her and just to see how this breeding thing goes it's like a dream job of mine and I put so much work and research into it and it's just amazing to be able to continue forward with it so yeah i plan to breed her next summer to have a litter of bernadoodles sorry if you can hear that the air did just kick on but thank you guys for following me along on this journey and just watching my videos and for your support it just means so much to me i hope this video was helpful whether you didn't know what ofa was and now you do or you were thinking about doing ofa or just didn't know what the process looked like I hope this was helpful. I really tried to be informational in this video and answer your questions. So if you have any more questions, let me know down below. I'd love to answer them and talk OFA with you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you in my next video. Bye friends. Oh.